Across the street is Wilson Park. If you leave our building and you walk across into that park and keep going diagonally across the park around the fountain, you get to the southwest corner of that park and there's a statue, a statue honoring W.C. Handy. I happened to be coming by that park sometime back, I think a couple of years ago, when that statue was about to be unveiled. And I've noticed it since then a number of times. It's been rained upon many times, a whole lot lately. It's been covered with ice a couple of times. The hot sun has beat down upon it day after day in the middle of the summer. Some strong winds have hit it, but it's still there. And it looks just like it did when it was unveiled. There is a sense in which you and I ought to be like that statue. Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians 15 and let me show you what I'm talking about. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And if you didn't bring your Bible, look in the songbook rack. There are some that are available for you to borrow and read from. And I think you'll get more from it if you will read along with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, before you start reading the text, listen to me again, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. Each year at this time, as the annual report is presented just prior to that or just after it or on the Sunday of, I always try to present a lesson, select some texts from the Bible that are appropriate for us to think about as we review the past year and look forward to the works that are ahead of us. This year I have chosen just one verse not a sequence of passages or a number of texts, but just one. And it's the last verse of this chapter, verse 58. Paul wrote, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now there are five phrases or words in this text that I want to call brief attention to. Start with me, just, you just look at it. The word therefore. Signifying that what is about to be written by Paul was in view of what he had just written. And what he had just written in the previous 57 verses of this chapter was about the resurrection. Life beyond this world. And in the presence of some critics who scoffed at the faith of Christians, who believed in the next world, who believe in resurrection from the dead, Paul presented a defense of the Christian faith that when you die, you don't cease to exist and you are going to be raised from the dead and a part of the proof of your own resurrection is the resurrection of Jesus. And in view of, in light of, in remembrance of, in the knowledge of the resurrection, 
and that you are going to continue to exist beyond this life, then hear these things. Therefore, because the resurrection is sure and life beyond this is real, therefore, what's the next part? My beloved brethren. And the first word of that phrase that attracts my attention is the word beloved. Think for a moment to whom he wrote that. He wrote that beloved to a congregation that had a case of incest in it, a congregation where, in which the brethren were taking each other to court over matters that they ought to settle among themselves, a congregation that was corrupting the Lord's Supper, a congregation that had people abusing the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit, a congregation that was torn with strife and division and discord, a congregation that had all kinds of sinners in it, but he loved them. And he called them beloved. And this is a good time for you and me to remember how we ought to love this church. Now I've scanned with my eyes over this audience a number of times already and I haven't spotted a perfect person here yet. And when I looked in the mirror to shave this morning, I didn't see one then either. But I love you. And brethren, we ought to love one another. I can look at you and concentrate upon your flaws and get myself awfully discouraged and negative in my thinking about this church any time that I would choose to do so. And there is a time and there is a place for us to concentrate upon our weaknesses, upon our sins, upon our flaws as we think of them. But don't forget to remember the Wood Avenue Church of Christ is a great church made up of great people. Wonderful young people, wonderful young adults, wonderful middle-aged people, wonderful older people. This is a good church. So watch yourself in 98 and improve your outlook and see the good more than you have been. Beloved brethren, now, the word, next word is brethren, my beloved brethren, therefore my beloved brethren. What follows in the instruction of Paul in this verse was not to the preachers or to the elders and the deacons, but to the brethren. Brethren is that word that stands for brothers and sisters. This is to everybody. So that which he teaches in this verse has application to everyone. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable. Now I'm putting the word steadfast and the word immovable together because they are very close in their meaning and they are identical in their application. And this is where the statue of W.C. Handy comes in. These words, steadfast and immovable, translate Greek words that mean fixed, firm, and settled. There's your statue. There's the sense in which we ought to be like that. Fixed, firm, and settled. Settled in the faith. Firm in our convictions. Fixed in our dedication to the Lord. And what they say to us is this, that there should be, in thinking back to 97, a remembrance of steadfastness. And that same steadfastness ought to continue through 98. 
and every year. It means that, back to my analogy, that whether it's raining or the sun is shining hotly or a strong wind is blowing, apply those figuratively now to your life, that you are the same. Some of you are going through some hard trials right now with sickness in the family, job insecurity, job search, financial woes. Some are going through a test of your faith. But it doesn't matter what comes, whether it's of a personal nature or of the congregational nature. The brotherhood, of the church of Christ is under assault today. Christians are under assault. And nationwide morality is being attacked and devalued to the point that it doesn't matter what anybody does. But you see, the Christian says, the Christian says, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter what's going on in the church, that which will characterize me is being steadfast, fixed, firm, and settled in my dedication to my Lord, and nothing's going to change that. Now that's what you and I have to keep before us. Brethren, listen to me. There is a lot to be said for sameness. That this is a person who is the same no matter what is happening around them. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That word always means all the time. Abounding. A word abounding then, this verse, translates the Greek word perisuo. And the word perisuo simply means there is an exceeding, the required more. And it simply means an application to us that when we consider the work of the Lord, we're not just interested in how little we can do, but how much we can do. And that prompts me to give an encouragement to all of us. Not a one left out, not a member of this church excluded. May I challenge you as you look at the work, the activities, and you hear the announcements that are made from this pulpit and through the annual report and in the church bulletin and so on, when you look at the activities and all of the works that are planned, I challenge every one of us to increase our involvement. And no matter how much you've been doing, see if there's a a work that you can do that you haven't been doing or something you've been doing but you can do it more. But increase your involvement in the work of the Lord. You see, God intends for us to be active in good work. And this passage that Stephen read for us earlier in Colossians 1 tells us that we're to be fruitful in every good work. And Paul said in Ephesians 2 verse 10 that that's a part of our, the purpose of God in our creation in Christ Jesus that he created us unto good works. And that's why the Bible says in passages like Galatians 6, verse 9, as we have therefore, or excuse me, verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. And the verse, verse previous to that, he says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Are you listening? Christianity is not a spectator sport. Christianity is a participating activity. What is the work of the Lord? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Well, that's the work that God wants his people to do. 
That's a reference to the things that he requires of all Christians. And it doesn't matter who the youngest person is in this room who's a Christian or who the oldest person is in this room who's a Christian. From the oldest to the youngest, from the youngest to the oldest, across the board, God expects every one of us, according to our abilities and according to our opportunities, to be involved in the work. And some of that work is done individually. Some of that work is done collectively in groups. But whatever our abilities are, by talent, by health, whatever our abilities are, and whatever our opportunities are, establishes a responsibility. But the commandment here is, let everyone, brethren, remember, brethren, always abound in the work of the Lord, the work that God gives us to do. Participate. Don't sit and watch the rest of the church work. You make sure that you're doing what you have the ability and opportunity to do. And that brings us back to the final point, which is the last phrase, and it connects back to the first word in it knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The word knowing signifies this was something about which they were sure. It was something about which they were knowledgeable, but it was something about which they were sure. And what is that? That your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Have you ever been involved in something, put a lot of energy into it, a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of money, and it turned out to do nothing, produce nothing, be nothing, and when you got through, you found yourself saying, well, that was a whole lot of work for nothing. We've all been there. That's not going to happen in Christianity. There's coming a time when you and I are going to stand before the Lord in judgment. And the faithful person the one who has been faithful in Christ all the days of his life. is going to be rewarded. And what we did in 97 was in view of the judgment and in view of eternity. And what we're going to do in 98 should be done in view of the judgment and eternity. Here we are but straying pilgrims. We're just pilgrims passing through. You remember that list that Brother Jones read for us? That ended with the name of Henry Romine? They were here last year. They're not here now, and we miss them. And we miss dozens of others along with them that have gone before us in years past. One day, your name will be on that list. Make use of your time, your talents, and your opportunities. Brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Open your songbooks, please, to the number announced. Speech on. Music recognition button selected. Screen.